In this video, I will explain why shirt size does matter. Now, I don't mean this in an egotistical way, as in, hey, I wear double XL, so I'm so jacked. Or, hey, man, I'm much bigger than you, because just look at this shirt size. No, I'm talking about using the shirt as a tool to assess individual progress, to know how your physique really is in terms of your muscular strengths and weaknesses, leanness, and even individual build. So let us dissect these facts. The first thing to understand is that shirt sizes are based off charts. The letters S, M, L, XL, double XL, etc., are not by coincidence, nor are they completely random. There are specific dimensions, which can often include the neck, chest width, shoulder length, sleeve length, torso length, even your waist length. All of these measurements can be extremely telling as a serious lifter. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say you decide to wear an XL and you notice that it's really loose around your neck and arms, but also droopy around the waist. What can this indicate about your physique? Simple. This might be telling you that your neck and arms are proportionately smaller compared to your other body parts, hence the looseness. On top of that, because the waist has a lot of extra room, well, maybe you're really lean. So now you know that your body fat is not that high. Or if that's not the case, perhaps your chest and back area is just simply overpowering everything else. Maybe your arms and neck are not a lagging area whatsoever. It could just be that you're genetically blessed in the upper back. You have naturally broad shoulders. You just, the other areas aren't up to par. You're just overpowered in something else, okay? And if it's not that, well, maybe it's just because you're short. That's a possibility or Relatively speaking, you have short limbs. There are some tall people who don't have the greatest wingspans. So maybe that's why it's affecting the sleeve length. Same thing for the torso. Maybe you got shorter torso. That's why you have the unnecessary bulk. But with this simple example, the shirt size can determine what your muscular strengths and weaknesses are. What should you focus on? What should you not focus on? For example, if I raise the shirt size, me personally now, it's going to be tight around the back area. It always is, but guess what? It'll become loose around the arms. Why? Because the arms are a lagging area for me. So the shirt is directly telling me that this is a problem. So instead, I can't upgrade that shirt size unless I correct the problem. You understand? Never forget that numbers are real. They're objective, they're factual. They're not based off what looks good. If the size chart says that you need to have a 46 to 48 inch chest, in order to be fitting, and you only have 42, guess what? It's gonna be loose. Your body's going to go in accordance with the chart. Measurements do not lie. Now, instead of getting angry at the measurements, use them to your advantage. Acknowledge it for what it is, and use that as a method of making progress. Measurements are going up. You should see a correlation in increased shirt size. With that in mind, shirt size can also indicate how your individual build is. In other words, what is your starting point. There are some non-lifters who rock larger shirt sizes automatically. Why? Because they're either really broad or really tall, or they're just naturally thick. They got a thick rib cage. There's lots of body features to consider here. But what's important to recognize is that the shirt size can tell you if you're pretty good on the genetic side. If you naturally have wide clavicles, you'll see it. You'll see it the moment you start wearing a t-shirt automatically. So now you know that maybe you have good genetics, maybe you're a torso dominant guy without even lifting. You just know. You put on that t-shirt, it's like, hey, I got good genetics for shoulders. I'm naturally broad. Likewise, you might find out that you're naturally really narrow. That could happen. At least now you know what to focus on. At least now you know what your build is at. In this way, the shirt can actually be an indicator of genetics. Whether you're blessed, cursed, or average, people don't think about it but it's true. What else does the shirt demonstrate? Well, if you're making muscle gains or not. Say you've been wearing medium t-shirts for the last five years and you see no difference in terms of how it feels. The same level for the most part. Well, maybe the shirt's telling you, dude, you stalled. You gotta change up your approach. Or if you did not plateau, maybe you recomped. You gained five pounds of muscle, lost 20 pounds of fat. In other words, 
you're leaner and bigger. That's why you're wearing the same shirt size. That's still progress. So whether your shirt size is saying the same or not, we can still find out a lot about our physique. It can tell you if you're losing gains or making. It's comparable to going through a massive cut. You drop 40 pounds of fat, yet somehow you magically maintain all your benching gains. That's awesome. You know that you made progress in that case. Well, it's the same thing with the shirt size. Just like we can compare strength and pound for pound performance, we can look at the shirt size simultaneously. On the other end of the spectrum, if your shirt size is rapidly increasing, but in the wrong places, now you know that it's probably not muscle gain, but fat, like the waist. If you're just seeing that the waist is getting bigger and bigger, but the other areas aren't improving that much, well, maybe your bulk went wrong. Or if it's not going wrong, at least now you know that you're bulking. You put on a little bit of fat. Usually the waist is not gonna increase unless you're putting on fat. Now this could be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're trying to reach a higher body fat, say bear mode, that's awesome. The shirt is directly telling you. At the same time, if your shirt improves, say going from a large to an XL because of the greater body fat, that's awesome because now you know that you look bigger in clothes because the measurements are objectively bigger. The reason why the shirt gets tighter is not just because of the gut, it's because the fat is going around other areas of your body. If you're 10% body fat, you're always going to look smaller in a shirt compared to a guy who's 20% body fat. That's why the bear mode, naturally enhanced physique is superior for looking huge in clothes, always will be because measurements don't lie. That's what we must understand. On a final note, I would like to address those who say that shirt size does not matter because all you have to do is choose a different cut, tailor your clothes, or wear really, really tight clothes. They're going to say that your guns will automatically be hugging the sleeves because the shirt's already tight, right? Here's the problem with that philosophy. You cannot add that which you do not have. In other words, if you have skinny arms and you wear a small t-shirt and it's really hugging those sleeves, guess what? You still have puny arms, and there's no way you can hide that. Nothing you could do. If you take a piece of cloth, a tight piece of cloth, wrap it around a pipe cleaner, guess what? It's still a pipe cleaner. You can still see the appearance. There's no bulk to it. There's no mass. It's the same thing with a lot of these guys who just try to wear tighter shirts all the time. If you stand next to someone who's maybe two or three shirt sizes up compared to you, maybe similar height, similar body fat, you're going to be dwarfed. Now, it's not about comparing yourself to other people. That's not the message of this video. You always want to live for yourself. But it still indicates the fact that if you're skinny, you're skinny. Period. If you're a novice lifter wearing super tight clothes, it shows. Whereas if you're an elite lifter, or maybe an even intermediate lifter, it shows. Whether you're wearing the right cut or not. So the way that I see it, dress your best. Always, at every single opportunity. Personally, because I'm short and I have lagging arms, I downgrade a size. Yeah, it's a little bit tight around the upper back, so what? I have to do this because of my height and build, okay? I'm not gonna try to be Mr. Macho and rock a, a larger shirt size if it's not gonna look as good. Likewise, pick the best cuts. Find clothes that look awesome on you. You always wanna look your best. Don't, don't buy stuff that looks bad, but also, Never use that as an excuse to say that shirt size is meaningless. Because as I demonstrated numerous times throughout this video, there are a wide variety of applications. You can use this as a real tool in measuring progress. And the measurements will not lie to you. They will tell you where improvement is needed or where you're already good. So in summary, if you lack size, the smaller shirt can never make up for that, okay? If you have puny arms or you're not that broad, it shows. So keep dressing your best, keep doing that, but also try to upgrade a little bit. Try to take your small shirt to a large or an XL. You'll look much better, trust me. So that said, folks, that's all I want to talk about in this segment. I hope you enjoyed this Alpha Destiny exclusive. I must be the first person to ever break it down to this level. Really like talking about all the various points on why shirt size matters. So I want to know from you now, do you agree with your boy? Share your feedback. And with that said, I'll talk to you all next time.